Okay, welcome to a video looking at some of the key factors on the revenue and cost side that influence business profits. Oftentimes, in a daily response question in particular, you might be asked to identify, analyze, and examine some of the key factors affecting business profits. So I thought I'd take a, an example here, Domino's Pizza, hopefully it'll be well known to many of you, and think about some of the key, key factors. Domino's, of course, is a global brand, a global franchise, essentially, with many, many thousands of stores around the world, including the UK. That figure is growing, dominated, of course, in the United States. Uh, if you look at the UK figures, just a bit of context for you, that last year, Domino's Pizza Group, which is uh, a sort of a, a franchise operating within the master franchise of the global Domino's Pizza brand, Domino's UK made an operating profit of just under 100 million pounds. Notice here that the rate of growth of profit has been very strong in recent times, nearly double or more than double their profit since 2013. But if you're looking at this from a data response point of view, the rate of growth of profit seems to have slowed down. 2018, uh, profits barely increased on the year before. Set against the revenue, well the revenues have continued to grow, uh, and the revenues, in fact, last year for Domino's UK were 1.259 billion. One, one point, there's a, there's a, in other words, a substantial increase in revenues. So it looks like profits are less than 9% uh, of, uh, of revenue. So what are the key factors affecting Domino's profits? Uh, this will be a classic exam question. I'm going to look at some revenue factors and some cost factors. On the revenue side, I would really strongly suggest in an exam going back to your year 12 work on elasticity of demand. So revenues affected by the price elasticity of demand, the extent to which Domino's customers are price sensitive. The impact, for example, of those famous two for Tuesday deals uh, in terms of boosting the top line revenue of the firm. Cross price elasticity is also relevant, the extent to which uh, changing prices of substitutes, rivals, for example, prices of supermarket pizza or the prices charged by rival delivery companies, um, the extent to which that impacts on Domino's pricing strategy. The price of complements, product bundling is a good example there, where they bundle in the cheap Cokes and the garlic breads, for example. Also think about the income elasticity of demand for Domino's pizza. To what extent is Domino's pizza a normal good? with a positive income elasticity of demand. Uh, to what extent is pizza, uh, the demand for pizza, does it rise or fall depending on the stage of the economic cycle? And of course, the year 13 point is that uh, revenues are dictated by prices and pricing strategy itself is also a function of the strategy of the firm, the objectives of Domino's. Is Domino's a profit maximizer or is it more of a revenue maximizer or looking to achieve fast growth going forward? All of these things are revenue factors. This diagram would be a level four analysis diagram, uh, and this shows an outward shift in marginal and average revenue. AR1, MR1 shifting out to AR2, MR2. And the consequence of that is an increase in the profit maximizing output from Q1 to Q2. This then allows Domino's to sell more pizza at a higher price. Price goes up from P1 to P2. A little bit of an increase in cost, but not much. Uh, you can see the shaded area here shows the much higher level of super normal profit. And of course, that, you know, that, that profit has a value. It might be used by the business to reinvest going forward. But don't be afraid to draw complex developed diagrams, show a dynamic, show a change here, a shift in revenue, increasing profits in this case. I'll show you another analysis diagram in a second which shows something different happening. The A star development points. So the, what are the things that the A star students tend to put into their answers? Nothing wrong with talking about elasticity at all. Nothing wrong with talking about business objectives. That's all fine. It's all good stuff. The top A star students just develop the answer a little bit more. So for example, uh, Domino's may, may make active use of price discrimination tactics. It has market power has the ability to set different prices for different products at different times, targeting segments of the market, including peak and off-peak pricing. Game theory might be brought in to answer the extent to which Domino's pricing has to, has to react and be aware of the pricing and the non-price competition 
uh, of, of uh, rival firms in the market. Thinking about longer term factors, changing behaviour of consumers, the extent to which revenues and therefore profits are being influenced by the growth of demand for free foreign products, how, how Domino's responds to that. And crucially, and this is really important for A-Level, the contestability of the market, the extent to which the price you charge is influenced not just by existing competition, but also by the threat of hit and run entry from rivals. Now, costs. Costs, I suppose, will be the relatively easier side of this thing to think about. So it makes it makes it a good idea to consider, for example, the fixed cost of the business, typically business rent, loan interests, uh, depreciation of capital machinery. Uh, variable costs, of course, can change. The cost of inputs, the cost of raw materials and ingredients, the wage costs, energy bills, perhaps employment taxes affecting variable cost. Crucially, factor productivity and efficiency determines the unit cost. So if wages are rising by, let's say, 4%, but labour productivity is rising by 5%, actually the unit cost of production could fall. And it's a good chance to bring in the likely effects of government on cost, including health and safety regulations, uh, indirect taxes, etc. So, for example, if you're doing, if you get a question on Pepsi and Coca-Cola, the sugar tax would have an effect on their profits. For Domino's, who knows? There may be a new tax on on dough or something to try and stimulate uh, healthy eating. So, these are key cost factors. What I've shown in the, this diagram is the impact of an increase in fixed costs. The reason for showing this is that students often get this wrong. An increase in fixed costs causes the average cost to shift upwards, but there's no change in marginal cost. Therefore, the output stays at Q1, but the total profit falls from what it was before. Again, the A-star development is important. So an A-star student would make a distinction between short-term and long-term cost factors. They might also think about the extent to which profits are influenced by uh, the, the, the sort of intensity of shareholder scrutiny of a firm, the extent to which shareholders hold managers to account. They bring the principal agent problem into the answer. And again, if market power and contestability affects revenues, it could also affect cost, particularly the possibility of some form of X inefficiency. Again, a, a classic case here is to think about short term, long term. If you get a question, assess, examine, uh, discuss, you're invited to evaluate. So the short-term, long-term perspective can be important. In the short term, it could be the cost of ingredients. It could be the productivity of your workforce. It could be the exchange rate affecting the price of imported materials. It could be a short-term change in the economic cycle. Those are short-term or cyclical factors. Set against much longer-term factors, the ability, for example, to exploit economies of scale. Can you visualise in your mind a diagram showing economies of scale and how that might impact on profits? Long-term changes in consumer behaviour uh, might be might be worth um, mentioning. The extent to which Domino successfully diversifies into new products as consumer tastes and preferences change. And the long-term changes in the market structure. That has a feedback loop back to, to Domino's. I'm reminded in particular in this final slide that no firm's dominance can be taken as a given. So in the United States, Zoom pizza is, uh, is challenging Domino's through its it's drive-by lorries, which where the pizzas are cooked in vans and lorries and, uh, and cars. In a sense, they're challenging this idea of, of uh, the 20-minute wait while somebody tries to find your house when they're trying to sell you a pizza. Contestability of markets is pretty fundamental. It's absolutely important when, when discussing uh, these issues. So there we go. Uh, these were some of the factors influencing business profits, and we used dominoes as a little case study. I hope you found that useful. Thank you.